Our first shot is opening the top cover and looking in here. This is where those tubes live that I mentioned earlier. They're now filled with ink. Um, the ink comes from around here, comes around through here, and feeds the printhead. So this little dealie is the printhead here. Um, if you look straight down in here, you can also see the electrostatic transport belt. It's the black shiny thing here. And this belt is charged to hold the paper in place as it moves through the printer. And this, is, this belt was one of the things that, that Sawgrass and Rico improved so that the quality of the dot placement and the consistency um, was, was improved. This is, on the left side of the printer, this is where we connect our computer to the printer. And it has a little nifty little cover. You take this off. And if you look inside, you'll see two connectors. One is for USB and one is for Ethernet. Uh, USB is very handy, of course, just plug it in. Um, the Ethernet is my favorite because if we're, we're connected to the printer through Ethernet, we can bring up the web server that's built into the printer and we can see more information about say the ink levels things like that so after you connect your cable what you're going to do is you'll put the cover back on and you're going to route your your connectors down here through this slot one of the things over here I want to mention about the power is that I recommend that you purchase an inexpensive UPS that's an uninterruptible power supply I like the APC brand, and I recommend that the printer and your computer be connected to a UPS. A UPS will provide a few minutes of, of power if in the case of a power failure, and it also will provide some amount of surge protection uh, for, for momentary small power problems. Uh, nothing, of course, will protect your computer or printer from a lightning strike. Okay, we're now looking at the back of the printer, and there's a couple of things I want to point out here. One is there's a little handle right here for carrying the printer. Number two is there's a connector here. This is the connector for the bypass tray, and it will wiggle in here, and that's okay. It floats a little bit to allow easy mating with the bypass tray. One big difference you'll see compared to the SG400 and its in, it, in the earlier model, the 3110, is there is now no duplex unit back here. That's been replaced, and the reason is, is sublimation cannot use duplexing, which means printing on both sides of the paper. So by, re by replacing the duplex unit, it makes the printer simpler, um, more reliable, and of course it takes up less space. In the back here, the duplex unit's been replaced by this door. Rarely, but occasionally, you might have to open this door to remove a jammed piece of paper. To do that, of course, is very easy. You just push down on these little tabs here, the door opens, and that will provide you access to remove a jammed piece of paper. All right, we're ready now to run some tests on the printer, and we're going to remove the paper tray. Before we remove the paper tray, I want to show you this right here. This part here is, is used when the paper comes out of the printer to keep it from falling out of the printer. It's a little paper tray eject system. So you pull it out like this, works, works, like, works like many other systems do. So let's go ahead and remove the paper tray and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you about the paper tray and how to load paper in it. Okay, here's our paper tray. First thing to note is when we do put paper in the tray, we want the print side face down. So we want our bright white side face down. First I wanna show you how to expand the tray so that it accommodates legal size paper. And you've got two tabs right here. We're gonna click those out. And then we expand like this and we'll lock them back into place, okay? So that just allows us extra length. This part will stick out of the printer, no problem. Um, next is I wanna show you how to put the paper in the tray. And really we're, we're framing the paper on three sides. So the paper is pulled out of here and it does really a C, okay? So first what we do is we push down on this and we can adjust this, okay? Next we can adjust this to frame the paper. So that's why this is really such a neat printer because we can actually go to very small sizes of paper. 
And so small means you can use appropriate paper for, say, a device cover. So for our test, to test the printer, we're going to put the paper in like this. It goes all the way back here. We frame the paper here. We adjust our backstop. It is important to adjust the backstop because the paper does tend to slip backwards, so this does need to be in place. Now we're ready to put the paper tray back in our printer and run some tests. Let's take a quick tour of the front panel here. We, of course, got our power key, and then we have our alert. This will turn red when, for instance, you run out of paper or an ink cartridge is empty. And then we have the enter key, and we have our menu key, which also doubles as a down arrow key. The up arrow key and the escape key causes to go up a level or backwards. We also have our job reset key, so if you want to cancel a job at the printer, generally you'd first pull out the paper tray to stop more paper from going in the printer. Then you're going to push the job reset key, and then you're going to push the enter key twice and occasionally you'll need to push the form feed key like if it runs out of paper and doesn't start printing again. All right, so let's go through the, the front panel kinds of things and there's a lot of things here so we're not going to go through them all. I do have other videos for that. So first we're going to push the menu key. Now often you may need to push it twice if the printer goes to sleep. So now I'm back at ready. We're going to push it one more time and I'm going to go down arrow key and I'm going to get to list test print and this is a a report that we're going to run on the printer and, and it tells us basically um, all about the printer what is the version of firmware that's in the printer that kind of thing and so to run this once we're at that menu we're going to push the enter key twice once and then twice now this is a two-page report obviously when you do this I would recommend you load plain paper in it okay Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to ready and by pushing the escape key and we're going to run the nozzle check. Very similar, you'll push the menu key and we'll push the down arrow key until the display reads maintenance and then at maintenance we're going to push the enter key three times. One, two, three. And what is the nozzle check? The nozzle check shows us the health of the printer. It indicates if we're printing with all our colors and to make sure that each nozzle on the print head is, is firing with ink. Now let's put it back to ready and we're going to take a look at these reports. Okay, the first thing to look at is the system version which is 0, 0.3.0 .0, and there occasionally will be firmware updates. And next we want to go down to where it says the ink remaining and you can see your levels here. These levels are not real accurate and so I recommend you hook up the web monitor so you can see the real ones. Or I do have a video showing you how to push the front panel keys into service mode to show you how to get the exact ink levels. But, the, you know, we've got about two-thirds of the ink left in the printer at this point in time. The last one here I'd like to bring your attention to is the ink collector unit. It shows how much space we have left. And we're at 100%, so we've got 100% space left. The rest is sort of interesting, um, those kinds of things. If we had already connected the bypass tray and the bottom tray, uh, this report would show that we have installed those accessories. Next, we want to show you the nozzle check. The nozzle check shows you our four colors, cyan, black, yellow, and magenta. These numbers on top represent what print head we're, those colors are using. And uh, essentially, if we're doing, having to do a cleaning, we can choose to clean printhead number one or printhead number two. The printhead is actually one complete unit, but there's a, what's called a capping station that lives underneath that, and it has two parts to it. So uh, note at the very bottom of each of these colors, it's not complete. We just have one dash. Um, and if you find this difficult to see, you can always sublimate it because you're now printing with sublimation ink. Well, our next step is to talk about sublimation paper. We need to print on paper for sublimation decorating. The paper we use we call release paper. It is not a transfer paper. It doesn't have some sort of removable emulsion layer. 
I recommend two papers, the DITRANS SPP and the TextPrint R paper for the Sawgrass SG400 printer. Um, these papers are somewhat interchangeable. They do about the same thing. It's always nice to have a plan A and a plan B. I favor the DITRANS paper for hard substrates. I favor the TextPrint R for soft substrates. I also like the TextPrint R for glass and our subless slate. The paper is available in a bunch of different sizes and the logic is very simple. Um, you want to use paper efficiently. So for instance, I'm holding in my hand our device insert paper. So it makes it very convenient. Load this in the paper in the paper tray and print it out and you're, you're not having to cut paper, you're not wasting paper. So these papers, this is the device insert paper. This is also the Mug 11 paper, cut for mugs. And this is Mug 15 paper. Having these papers is especially useful for me. Being left-handed, I have a difficult time cutting things and so forth. Um, in addition, we have letter size paper. We have our legal size paper. And then if you own the bypass tray, which I recommend, this is paper you'd use. It's 8.5 by 21. So it's quite useful for doing longer things. Remember, these papers are loaded properly in the tray. And for the bottom tray, they need to go with the print side face down. And for the bypass tray, it needs to go with the uh, print side face up. So let's move to talking about the optional accessories for this printer. Our first optional accessory is the bypass tray. This is a great second paper source. In addition, it provides a extended length. Um, and so I like to use it for longer things or just, just whatever makes, uh, makes sense for you. To install it is very easy. You'll see these little tabs over here. And so we're going to raise it up to the printer and let it connect just like that, it's that easy. Okay, here's our bottom tray, and what we're going to do is raise this printer up, put it on top, and it will be installed. So we're going to lift our printer up. You might get some help if it's too heavy for you. Put it in here. Now with these connected here, we now have a very serious sublimation printer. We have three paper sources for three different size papers. Um, in addition, after you've installed all the trays or any optional accessories, you must cycle power on the printer for the printer to see the new accessory. And it's as simple as pushing the, the blue button until the printer turns off, turning it back on, and you can run that list test report again. And this time, if you were to run it, you would see that we have a bypass tray and the bottom tray installed on our printer.